I'm Alicia Doherty, and I'm the Regional Donor Services Executive for the Georgia Region. And I'm here to welcome you today to our blood manufacturing facility and immunohematology reference laboratory right here in Georgia. Built in 2007, this is a 182,000 square foot facility located in Douglasville, Georgia, approximately 20 miles outside of Atlanta. This is one of the busiest Red Cross blood manufacturing facilities in the country, as we manufacture blood collected in Georgia, Alabama, and the Carolinas. Products are then distributed to over 100 hospitals across the Southeastern United States, including Georgia, Alabama, Florida, and once again, the Carolinas. We have over 400 staff members working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to ensure delivery of over 300,000 units of red cells and about 50,000 platelet products every year. We also provide therapeutic apheresis service across the state and are one of the largest apheresis services in the Red Cross system. Throughout the facility, you will see state-of-the-art technology and streamlined design measures that ensure safety and efficiency in the manufacturing, testing, and storage of blood products. Today, we're gonna to take you on a behind the scenes tour of all the many great activities that take place here on a daily basis. We're gonna start with receiving, go into manufacturing, labeling, quality control, our reference laboratory, and finally distribution. But before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to two key leaders here in Georgia. Hi, I'm Dr. Baya Lasky. I am the medical director of the American Red Cross in Georgia. I provide medical oversight of our processes to ensure donor, patient, and product safety. And I also provide consultative support to the hospital partners in our community regarding medical issues related to transfusion medicine and blood banking. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hello, I am Arthur McDade. I'm the Director of Manufacturing of the Douglasville facility of the American Red Cross. In our facility, we process, test, label, and distribute blood and platelets to our community. Welcome. This is our receipt and triage area. This is where we receive up to 1,500 units per day. Because we receive so many units throughout this facility, it is imperative that we have a facility this size to process all the products that come through. Boxes of particular products may be prioritized based on the time they were packed and if they have specific processing requirements. Once the units are logged as received into our system, each product goes to its respective manufacturing area. Every collection has a unique number that is assigned at the time of collections and is used to track the blood products through each step of the manufacturing, testing, labeling, distribution, and transfusion. Being able to track every unit with this level of precision ensures the safety, quality, identity, purity, and potency of every unit. This is our whole blood processing area. This is where we begin the process for separating our red cells, our plasma, and our cryoprecipitin. During this process, we're also performing our visual inspection for any clots or any discoloration in our blood. Whole blood is placed into these large centrifuges, causing the heavier red cells to aggregate at the bottom of the bag while the liquid cell-free plasma remains on top. After centrifugations, the bags are placed into an expressor where the plasma is expressed into a separate bag. Red cells are run through a filtration process which reduces certain types of recipient complications. A saline-based solution is added to the red cells to extend their shelf life to 42 days and another solution is added to prevent it from coagulating. Red cells are stored just above freezing at one to six degrees Celsius. Red cells carry oxygen in the blood, which is necessary for the functioning of every organ and tissue in the body. Trauma patients may require up to 100 units of red cells, while patients with cancer and those undergoing chemotherapy may require red cell transfusions for the duration of their therapy. 
Other patients requiring red cell transfusions are those with gastrointestinal bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage, and those undergoing cardiac surgery and organ transplants. Individuals with blood disorders such as sickle cell disease may be transfusion dependent for life. You'll learn more about this when we visit our reference lab, but for now, Connie is going to tell us more about plasma and cryoprecipitate manufacturing. Plasma and cryoprecipitate are stored at negative 20 degrees Celsius and have a shelf life of one year. These units are stored and shipped frozen and must be thawed at the hospital at the time of transfusion. Cryoprecipitate requires special handling that involves thawing, separating, pooling, and refreezing of plasma units. This extra concentrated product that is high in a substance called fibrinogen helps stop bleeding and is commonly used in heart surgeries. Plasma contains coagulation proteins which help the blood to clot. Plasma is transfused to burn patients, trauma patients, and individuals with liver disease and sometimes with severe infection. Every step of our process ensures the safety of our blood supply. Kevin, the supervisor of our quarantine and labeling department, will tell us more about this. Samples drawn at the time of collection are sent to one of our testing facilities where they undergo 12 different tests, including blood type and infectious diseases screening, such as HIV, hepatitis B and C, and others. After manufacturing, components are placed in WIP or general storage, which is a temperature controlled area used to store components awaiting required testing and final component labeling. Test results are transferred electronically to the processing center, after which components are removed from storage and end release labeled. Units that pass all testing and inspection can be labeled. Our computer system, ePRGISA, automatically performs a status check and the label is printed based on the status of each component. A concatenated scan of the barcodes is performed. This increases assurance that the label printed was applied to the correct component. A good stock label prints for components, which indicates that the components have passed all status checks. Components labeled with good stock labels during end release labeling are delivered to storage and distribution. A reject label is printed for units that has failed one or more status checks and signifies the component must be discarded. In addition to quarantining the blood, every positive or reactive test result will prompt a notification to the donor so that they can discuss these results with their healthcare provider. Now, many people are familiar with the process of donating whole blood which occurs at our mobile drives, but platelet donations are a little bit different. Platelets are collected at our donor centers via an automated process called apheresis, which draws blood, separates it into its component parts, the platelets are collected into a bag, and everything else is returned to the donor. James, the supervisor of our quality control lab, will tell us about platelet processing. Hi, my name is James Williams. I'm the manager of the QC laboratory here at the Red Cross, and this is our QC laboratory. Up front, we have processing for red cells where we check hemoglobin and white cells. We have a middle section here for processing of platelets uh, back to area. And this section here is processing of platelets using the pathogen reduction method. They must be weighed and measurements are taken to determine the volume and concentration of each collection. From these values, our technologists determine if each collection can be converted into one, two, or three transfusable platelet units and what type of technology will be applied to prevent or detect bacterial contamination. Some of our products will undergo pathogen inactivation, a process that requires a special compound to be added to the platelets, which are then placed into these UV illuminators for six minutes. This whole process must be completed within 24 hours from collections, so staff have to carefully inspect these units to ensure timely processing. This technology inactivates bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens. Other products will have samples drawn at 36 hours for bacterial culture. 
These samples will be placed in our bacterial detection instruments and will remain here for the life of the platelet. Platelets must be stored at room temperature between 20 and 24 degrees Celsius with constant agitation to prevent clotting. Platelets have a shelf life of only five days, so getting them out to the hospital is of utmost importance. Platelets are involved in the first stage of clotting, which is necessary to stop or prevent life-threatening bleeding such as stroke. About 50% of our platelets are transfused to patients with cancer, particularly those with leukemia. In fact, they may require daily transfusions of platelets for the duration of their chemotherapy or while they're undergoing a bone marrow transplant. Other types of patients that require platelet transfusions are any surgical procedures or sometimes premature babies may require platelet transfusions for the first few months of their lives. Besides all of this manufacturing that you've just heard about, some patients will require specialty testing. Christy, the manager and interim director of our immunohematology reference lab, will tell you about how the Red Cross supports patient care. This is our immunohematology reference laboratory. We perform advanced level testing on both donor and patient specimens. One of our main tasks is identifying rare blood types, and locating matches for patients in need. The Immunohematology Reference Laboratory, or IRL, is a specialized laboratory that is staffed by 39 laboratory technicians, medical technologists, and support staff. The IRL operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We work very closely with our hospital customers to provide specialty blood for patients with complicated transfusion needs, such as individuals with sickle cell disease, and others who are on chronic transfusion therapy. The Douglasville IRL is one of the largest IRLs in the country and the second largest in the American Red Cross system, filling an average of 500 orders for specially typed red blood cells every month. Many of these orders are for multiple numbers of red blood cells. In addition to liquid red blood cells, which are stored refrigerated in the laboratory, we also freeze rare units and store them in minus 80 degrees Celsius freezers for up to 10 years. For patient testing and sample workups, whenever possible, we perform testing using the same methods as our hospital customers. Manual testing is performed utilizing test tubes and semi-automated testing is performed using Ortho's gel column agglutination technology. Additionally, to meet the needs of our often hard-to-match patients, we proactively screen donors every day. One of the ways we do this is using the Immucor Neo Iris Blood Bank Analyzer. Having this instrument enables the technologist to be able to focus on the more complex patient testing. Our reference laboratory is a member of the American Rare Donor Program, or ARDP. We are the only ARDP laboratory in Georgia. We are extremely proud of the fact that we've received several awards from the ARDP for the impressive number of rare donors that we have registered and for the number of units that we have provided in support of the rare donor program. Our staff are always diligently working behind the scenes to support our patients and to fulfill the mission of the American Red Cross. In addition to this testing, upon request, blood products may be irradiated to prevent a rare but highly fatal transfusion complication called transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease, which affects patients with compromised immune systems. So now that you've seen the manufacturing, testing, labeling, and sometimes irradiation of our blood products, it's time to ship them off to the hospitals. Tracy of our hospital services will tell you more. All products are packed in validated temperature control containers per FDA standards. Orders are shipped out as a standing order request, routine request, or on demand for emergency needs. 
Products are carefully selected for each order requested, visually inspected for suitability, and packed in the designated shipping containers for that product type and quantity. Hospital Services coordinates closely with our order management and customer service teams to ensure our hospitals receive the products they need when they need them. Blood products are being shipped to hospitals 24 hours a day, seven days a week in order to service our community. I hope you enjoyed the tour of our manufacturing facility today. It's important to remember though, that we can't do this work without the support of the community. We rely on sponsors to partner with us to host blood drives, and we rely on volunteer blood donors to come in each and every day so we can fulfill the mission. We encourage you to join our mission and donate blood or become a volunteer. We thank you for your support.